Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Bernadette with Burn Stitches. We have a floss tube extra today. This is going to be a super fun one. We are going to do an unboxing of the newest kit that I got from Buddy Stitch called the Palace and also doing a start with me. So I'm really, really, really excited for this kit um my friend sarah from memphis sarah e sent this to me as a birthday present and this is just absolutely gorgeous i have been wanting this kit since letty stitch released them um but basically this is london there's big ben and here's like the famous red tour buses so really excited um yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So for this kit for Letty Stitch, um, this is the second kit that I've started for this company. Um, I really like the kit itself. I think they're very well made. Um, they are definitely pricier than Dimensions, but I think the quality of the kit itself makes it worth the extra price. So... For this particular kit itself, the palace is a 4 out of 5 skill level with um, 16 count Ada. It actually looks like the fabric is great. And then in terms of the different types of stitches that will be used for this project, you have um, the full crosses are going to use two strands, a back stitch, or sorry, this is a half stitch with two strands. And then you have the back stitches, which is using one strand and two strands each. So this is what I really like about Letty Stitch um, and Luca S. Um, if you don't know, Luca S and Letty Stitch are um, from the same company. Um, Luca S is the parent. Uh, what I really like about it is you can tell right away what type of skill level you need, how hard the kit will be, um, the number of colors, and the different type of stitches so you know in case you prefer um prefer an easier kit um, i've seen kits before where it's just all full crosses and back stitch there's no 10 stitch um you can also see um because sometimes you know i've mentioned i've heard people before mention they don't like the very many strands of half stitches sometimes in dimensions because it does make it a little bit difficult to stitch um so dimensions usually you'll find um half stitches that are maybe like five to six strands i have seen letty stitch or look as have that kind as well but you will know right away based on the packaging so let's go ahead and open this so this is what it looks like um usually when you um when you get the packaging, all of these for the crinkling, I've never actually opened this. But when you get the package, um, it's usually made up of these pallets. Um, what is great about these ones is they actually have. Um, they have these little um, cutouts already and same with these so you can um, if you have extra flosses you can just hang it in here so you don't actually need to get a um, like one of those like um, Paco organizers or anything like that if you don't need to or if you don't have one that's totally okay but this is what the color palette looks like for this kit um, it comes in four palettes and then as you can see um, they should give you enough um, to cover so really like that for this particular kit they also gave us the necessary tools um, it looks like there are two needles most likely one is for the full process and the other one is for the back stitch and then it actually looks like it comes with a needle threader and then it says it's right here 26 that is the size of the needle um we're gonna probably be using the needles only 
um, because I have my own needle threader that I'm going to be sharing with you in just a few moments. This is the fabric that comes with the kit. It looks like it is a stormy, looks like a gray fabric. It's um, Zweigart. Um, it's not gridded, so um, it's not... Um, it's not surged either um, so I'll show you how to get started on this and then let's take a look so here's the front cover of that kit um, in the backlet or in the back of the booklet um, there are the instructions for the cross stitch if this is your first time or if you need a refresher on how to um, you know do your stitches um, this is basically it and then here's the paper copies um, I'm not gonna show you all the paper copies because they are it is the chart but let's just see what it looks like so I think There's the general instructions in different languages. I don't really need that. It's also not in English. Um, I believe this is basically, um, Letty Stitch and Luca as does this, but they basically have a, um, like a section where it basically tells you where the back stitches are on the chart. So this could be quite helpful. So that's that. And then let's just see what type of chart we get. Um, I'm just gonna show you a corner piece, but I wanted you to see how clear the um, the charts are for Letty Stitch. Um, so here's an example of how big that is. It's actually quite big. It's very easy to read. Um, and these are the symbols and instruction keys. Um, it's very nice. Um, Letty Stitch uses Anchor Floss, um, not DMC. Um, it is Anchor. Anchor. Um, but what's good about this is um, in this particular kit, they tell you, of course, like the symbols and what it correlates to, but they also tell you the anchor numbers. So it's good in the event that you actually do need, um, if you run out of floss, you can just use this to um, grab some more. Hopefully though, they should have given us enough flosses that we don't need to get more. But it's just good, and also this is good if you, um, you know, if you ever need, if you ever want to restitch it again, you know, you do have the, the colors. It also looks like it tells you how many stitches there are per color. So, um, it looks like the highest, uh, the number of colors are, um, the mustard and the shell gray colors have about 2,000 stitches each. So yeah, it's nice. Um, let's see. For the charts itself, um, I'm just trying to see what kind of charts. Um, it looks like there's seven pages. So that's quite a lot um, but they are very easy to stitch uh, the symbols are very easy um, to read so let me just pull this up okay so in terms of Oh, you know what? I just realized. Okay, so not all Letty Stitch does to like do this, um, but basically I realized because I was wondering why there's so many pieces of paper. Um, there are seven pages, or sorry, it's actually eight pages of stitches. So um, here's the here's all the stitches. 
but then they also gave us another copy another set so there's two sets of um charts here and this one is the one that includes the back stitches so this is actually quite nice um because sometimes it's really hard um if you don't make a working um, copy of your paper and you highlight it and there's only one copy it gets really hard when there's a back stitch because you could be covering it with your highlighter so it's really good to see that they give you two sets now let's go ahead and get started with this kit um so the accessories that i usually have whenever i start a kit um are these so i do have a project bag to put everything in um this is just a mesh zipper bag so you can get these on amazon um this is the biggest size and then um i think this is a three maybe i'm not quite sure but it's quite big it should fit everything you can get this on amazon or aliexpress it's really inexpensive i haven't bought any project bags yet just because i think um i'd rather use that money to buy more fabric or other charts so i just stick with the um with these because they're also very durable they're waterproof i've taken this to the beach and you know it's pretty foolproof so there's that and then other things that i usually um use is um so these are my must-have accessories whenever i stitch so i have a needle minder i will be using this one from caterpillar cross stitch that i ordered it's i thought it would be perfect because it's the london um tour bus um so yeah this is the needle minder basically you can attach your needle um here's an example and then it just attaches it so you you know you don't lose it like me i have a dog at home and i don't want it to fall into the couch and you know hurt him and then another piece is this is a needle minder so i know that letty stitch already includes a needle minder here but i love to use my own um from my collection um, i bought this from etsy from a seller um the shop is called what can't brooke do um and this is an, a magnetic needle minder this is actually like one of my all-time favorite accessories but basically um here's you know the two-sided um, needle minder and then you attach this to your fabric so whenever you take it out and need to thread your needle this still looks like this so it's really really such a big game changer but i'm gonna be using this penguin that i got excuse my very overgrown nails i'm getting it redone tomorrow um but yeah i love using these and then um i usually always have a pair of scissors in my kit i bought these from aliexpress as well you can also get this on amazon they're really inexpensive i don't have expensive scissors because i tend to lose them so i'm not ready for a more pricier needles um but yeah this is actually uh as far as i'm concerned i've traveled with these scissors before on my carry-on for traveling um through a plane um so this is tsa approved i've never gotten stopped before i've taken it in both domestic and international flights um i do keep on the cover though um so it doesn't look too sharp um but yeah these are the scissors i am i think i paid about two dollars for each one through aliexpress um because i will be using a paper chart um you know it always helps to have highlighters so this is the highlighters that i will be using i have a lot um i also have this this is a um magnetic needle holder um as you can see there's like a magnet inside that you can attach all your needles i think this is from just nan i got it from my local um frosted shop here in town but yeah this is magnetic and then lastly um i have oops, 
so as you guys know i'm obsessed with nerge um, but these are the different um, sizes that i have i have the number four the number three and the number two um let me see if i can let me see if i can zoom out there you go um but these are the different um sizes I think um, I'm ready to get started. So the fabric that it came with um, is not pre-gridded. So sometimes um, Letty Stitch, Luca S, um, sometimes your fabric comes pre-gridded, um, but because I think the fabric is gray, it's not the pre-gridded kind. So I am actually going to grid my fabric. So to grid the fabric, I have um, I have these pens that I use. I got this from I think one two three stitch or Amazon, but this is the threaders. Um, so you have to make sure that you use a water soluble ink specifically for fabric or ones that you can iron out and it will disappear. So this is the one where if you iron out, it will disappear with heat. So I'm just going to be using these. You can also use the fish line hook if you don't like to mark your fabric with a pen. Um, I do have to caution you. Um, I only do the pen on Ada fabrics that are, um, you know, um, like not hand dyed so if you have your fancy hand dyed fabrics i don't recommend using these um if you need to wash your fabrics um, i don't recommend anything inky because you know you might um the colors might wash out from your fabric so only use this if you know what you're doing um another thing i know some people have tried to use pencils for marking do not use a pencil because the pencils do not come off the fabric so don't use it you're gonna be leaving pencil marks on your um on your fabric and you're not gonna be able to take them out okay so i think i'm ready to start um so judging by the picture um trying to find a there you go so judging from this picture it obviously is taller than wider so that is how we're going to put our um that's how we're going to set up our fabric so here's the fabric that it came with um like i said this is um let's align this so you want it taller i can't fit everything but know that this is the taller side um and the way that i personally start is the good old-fashioned um folding the fabrics in half in quarters and finding the middle so that's how i find the middle so let's fold it in half um it's honestly not a big deal if it's not completely straight you really just need to figure out where the half is there you go and then let's fold it again like i said it's fine if it's not completely synced up all right and then there you go there is your middle right there what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna grab one of these i have a lot of needles because i have a lot of fabrics i'm just gonna grab one of the needles from here and i'm just gonna poke a hole right around the middle so it looks like this let me see if i can zoom back in yep it looks like this so now when i unfold my fabric it looks like that so then what i'm going to do i can't remember which of these have the better ink um i 
I'm just gonna mark the middle. Um, so doesn't matter to me. Um, sorry, this is actually the the right side. So um, I'm just gonna mark the fabric. Let me zoom closer so you can see, but. With that, I'm just going to pick a place that this, oops, sorry, totally went off frame, um, but yeah, I just marked it that that is the middle. So I usually mark a plus. So now let's take a look at so it looks like this this is basically the middle um so i'm just gonna look at the pattern so how i do it is um i usually outline so the very page the very top page find the one where it says like zero zero so usually it's like 10 by 10s so that's what you're going to look for that's the, the top left of the fabric and then i'm just going to see how far it goes on this side um so to figure out what the middle page is usually you find the ones that have a triangle so the middle is so this is a hundred one two three so it's a hundred and three i'm gonna write this down somewhere that basically the width width side 103 is the middle and then for the height oops for the height of the fabric um, I'm going to go down and see where it is. So I found it. It's on page 3. It is. So here's 140. So it's, this is 140. Then it's 139, 138, um, 137. So it's kind of weird here that it's kind of in the middle. So I'm just going to say the width, the height. Middle is 138. So, what that means is, um, so if I go back to my chart, it looks like, um, so it goes 120, 120, Okay, so it looks like the end is about 207, 10, 9, 8, 7, 206 is the very last stitch. It goes up to 206, and then the bottom goes out to about 275. So you can split that in half. I dropped my fabric on the floor. Um, it's actually this side. Okay, so basically this starting point is 100. Um, we're gonna go down to, um, I think 138. Oh, I dropped my thing. Give me one second. So... 103 and 138 so in terms of thing where i usually like um so you can actually if you want you can go ahead and get started and put your first stitches here but i'm just gonna grid my fabric um so how i grid it is um so here's the middle i'm just gonna show you the top part I drop my fabric again. I'm gonna count how many groups of tens there is. 
so that I can start counting how many um, crosses. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, ten, because it's ten by ten squares. Um, so I'll put this on the side so I have more room. Um, uh, basically, so here's the 10. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, so it started off as like 10. So one, so I'm just going to count one, two, three, count how many holes. So, one, two, three, four. I'll go closer. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna just mark it a little bit and then see if that makes it to ten. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, perfect. So, I'm basically going to make 10 of these. There's one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When in doubt, go over it again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Then go one, two, three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> then let's go again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have five so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is one hundred ninety eighty seventy sixty fifty. So So 190, 80, 70, 60, So 190, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0. So basically, let me just make sure I'm on frame. This basically tells me this is the very end where that 0 will be. And this is the middle of the page. So 
0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. There's that. Um, okay. And then we're going to go up. So the middle portion was 138. So I'm just going to say this is 140. Um, it's okay not to be completely in the middle. Um, so this is 140. Then we need 15 um, to make it. So you can go up or down. Um, for now, let me just count to make sure that this ties out to 100. So I'm just going to count all of the spaces all the way to the end. Um, let me just zoom back out. Um, I'm just going to count all of these to make sure that this ties up perfectly um, before I move on to the other half. So... Okay, perfect. So this aligns perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the next half. So now we're gonna go up that way to the top. So um, we're basically gonna do the same, but I'm just gonna start off with here and then go from there. So um, let's go ahead and count so i need each block is a 10 so the middle here is 140 so we need 14 more of these plus marks going that side to the top so let's go ahead and get started So 140, 30, 20, 10, 0. This is 100, 90.
So again, 140, 30, 20, 10, 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50. So that's 50. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and label this if I could. I've had this pen for a few years, so it's not, it's not the best when trying to write, but I think that's good. That's 140, so 140, 130, 120. 110, 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0. So, let me just see if I can write down 0. So, this is basically, let me zoom out. This is basically the first half of the project. Um, and then if you want to finish gridding the rest, then I think that that's fine. Um, you basically can just follow this and then you'll do the same on this side. Um, for this purpose, I usually actually only grid like one portion. Um, And then I figure out the rest. So we're going to be focusing stitching this first half of the pattern. Um, I do like to start in the middle. So um, I'm going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to figure out what's the best um, hoop. It's pretty big. So I think this looks perfect, which is the number four, um, because it basically fits everything. So let's go ahead and put this on the nerge um, so we can go ahead and get started. So I usually unhook, pop these out. There we go. So um, you can do it. This is how I set up my fabric. Um, so this is my USB cable for my computer. Um, okay, so I'm going to do this. There you go. This perfectly aligns. Now, this is the hoop. Now let's try to fit this in there. This is what it would look like. The crease should go away later as you work through the fabric. Now I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. Um, so what I also like to do is I will go ahead and put on my needle minders. Um, 
You've heard me mention this several times in the past if you are a returning viewer. But I use my needle minder as kind of a north star. So I know which direction it should go up to. So this way, I know that this is the top right corner. And then put on the needle minder. Okay, looks like it's gonna be this. There you go. And like that. So when I take off the needle minder, it's still right there. You can definitely, by the way, make your own needle threaders because I know they can be quite expensive. Um, okay, so I've seen in the past questions or comments on people saying they don't like Nurge because it's not as tight as they can get it compared to a Q-snap. So, I'm not gonna lie, I also like Q-snaps, but you just need to play around with the nerge. They can definitely get tight. So, here's what it looks like on my end. So, I think it's pretty tight, but it can be tighter. So, I will just absolutely make sure that you're careful but i'm gonna unscrew this i'm gonna untighten this a little bit and pull the fabric even more um you just want to make sure that you don't end up pulling too much that you actually rip off your fabric but yeah just make sure that you keep pulling the fabric everywhere it's much harder I'm not gonna lie, it is a little bit harder. I'm gonna put both my arms in here to get it as tight as possible. Um, it is a bit harder compared to um, linen because Ada's, at least in particular, the ones that I get from kits are a bit firmer or, um, you know, they're not as bendy as linen so i think i'm actually quite um good with this i do have these excess fabrics so what i typically do is i roll these out and i do um i clip this on um let me just give me one second i'm gonna grab them These are the ones that I have. Um, so these are kind of dirty. <laughs> but okay, so these are those spools that I have. I got this again from Amazon. So I am just going to try to bend it like this. And then I also have those um, magnets, but I don't know where they are right now, so I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use what I have in hand, um, and then I'm going to do the same on this side. There you have it.
And that is how I start my kits. I hope this video is helpful. Um, let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see. But I think um, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the project. Um, I think um, I'm gonna probably stop the video, but just wanted to show you one last time on how to start the project. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, let me know if you have this kit or have tried any Letty Stitch or Luca S um, kits and what you think of them. Um, I do have other videos um, from the past where I've unboxed some of the other kits. So let me know. Um, I'd like to hear from you. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye now.